these mod planes actually happily already started up, despite the fact that everybody who knows me knows that normally I'd run under cold and dark. Um, that's because, as far as the plane's concerned these days, there is no cold and dark. Um, one of the biggest features of the PC-9 Advanced is what I will show here. We're going to leave this gen switch up. Basically, we're going to do a sloppy shutdown. So rather than shutting down properly, we're going to leave a couple of things turned on. We're going to... Uh, we left the left boost pump on. Sloppy guy forgot to turn off the instruments. He left the side panel on. Left the nav... He left the beacon light on. So, okay, fairly swappy, sloppy shutdown. Here. I will note, this is so far only on the front. Um, now, normally if I do this, we'll switch over to... Um, Jump over to the T6 for a second here. And let it load in. Now, as you guys are aware, normally, okay, we've just changed aircraft. If I switch back to the PC-9, the PC-9 should reset to whatever it was set to, cold and dark or ready to fly. One of the features of Advanced is that when I switch back here, it should, I say should because it is still very much in development, remember exactly what my switches were. And as you can see, the generator switches up, the fuel switch I had up is up, Dimmer is exactly where I left it. The bacon light's still on. And all that fun stuff. If I'd left the flaps at a certain point, they'd be at a certain point. Um, the... Basically... Just about every one of these switches and the like is now... 100% persistent. It remembers exactly how I left the aircraft which is the start of what I call the living world update because you know can't use certain other terms there copyright uh, another big change here it remembers if I have my external fuel tanks on between changes <coughs> it also remembers how much fuel was in my my tanks and automatically resets everything and there's people who, anybody who's used the current release knows using these values to add and remove your fuel is a little hard, it can be a little frustrating um, not anymore you can click and hold and it will release 1% of fuel at a time Or we, we can click and do it in ones. Um, you'll see as we're doing this, it's definitely loading and unloading fuel. The other one is doing this actually shifts the weight. You can see it just there. Um, small movement as I add and remove the pilot so we're actually these now matter um, it dynamically adjusts the weight based on if you have a pilot in the aircraft or not 
Um, and finally, a big one you'll notice is that the APU is back. Um, so, if I adjust the size of this for a moment. If I click the APU, you'll notice we just got power. There's no external model for the APU being there at the moment, but we have an external ground power unit powering this aircraft. I can get up, walk away, leave, and just trust me, 24 hours later, come back, and this aircraft will still be happily sitting here, powered. So, what this means, of course, is that you can actually now do the, ex the standard external power startup lists. Um, just to prove, so batteries off, generators off, and we still have everything. The other big feature that's done at the moment is the start of the failure control panel. Now this hasn't made a lot of progress, I've only got ailerons left and right done. Um, in the end we will have as many of these possible. There might be one or two I can't actually do, um, but we're hoping we can get all of these in. Um, what we have here is control surfaces can be jammed or in the case of everything but the flaps the cable can snap on a jam you'll either be limited or have no actual physical movement if both sides are jammed um, if the cable snaps it basically randomly moves the control surface um, eventually I want it take into account the dynamics of speed because as you get faster the surface should by rights move less um, and become more stable simply because of airflow over the wing eventually locks it into place um, of course most of the time by the time on a snap of the control runs to one of these that it does um, lock you into place you're in a lot of trouble uh, the elevator same deal it'll, you know, it'll either jam meaning you can't move up and down or it'll snap meaning you've got no control over your up and down rider again jam or snap your flaps you'll be able to jam either the left down or the right down um, this will also be things like a partial hydraulics failure in the flap over here or um, the like the actual reason for, the, for it jamming doesn't really matter it's one of those ones where a lot of the data in the system will be done so that it knows why it jammed and, the, and you know can display the correct behaviour but as far as the actual simulations really cares um, it's just jammed and it's not going to work uh, as you can see here the landing gear will eventually have the ability to be jammed up jammed down or a failure to lock so obviously on a failure to lock as you land it will um, collapse on you or the like. This might be expanded to individual landing gears um, but for the most part that's actually what the partial extensions here are for. Basically means that you know it's not gonna fully lock and brake failure on your left axis, your right axis or both. So you might land and find you've got no brakes. Um, the propeller will eventually be able to have a governor seizure, which basically means whatever the prop was set to 
I had to time it. Um, jammed is what you'll get. A governor failure, which basically means that the propeller governor, uh, it's not going to be working and you could, or, you know, you could actually go over, um, end up going too fast on your prop, whatever. Gearbox failure, which will basically mean that the engine's going, but the propeller's not. Um, fuel tank leaks. Um, these are actually already supported for the most part. I've rewritten the entire fuel code. There were some bugs in the original release. Well, not so much bugs, but limitations in the code that I was using. Um, that gave some interesting fuel results. Um, that no longer happens. The NGM will be able to model, it will end up modelling a hung start, fire, FOD, flame out, seizure, an ELU going wrong, so basically all this stuff going wrong, ignition going wrong and the starter going wrong, uh, the lightings will ha have a short or the globe broken. Yeah, of course, globe broken will just mean that it doesn't come on. Um, short will mean when you turn it on. Hopefully the circuit breaker will pop, or otherwise you might find that, you know, you have a lot more problems. And there's a whole bunch of system failures. Um, everything from a generator failure to a battery failure. Um, or one of your radios crapping out. Um... These are all, like I said, these most of this is still a work in progress. Um, and it's taking time, a lot of time, because I've not been well. I have a wedding on plan, well, not planning, it's planned. And we're getting ready for. Um, and in the end, my health comes before any of all, all this, as a lot of people are aware. But that being said, Let's take a look at some stuff here. Ah, the other thing you'll notice is my oxygen pressure is anything but full. It is also um, persistent. The smoke will be, I haven't actually got, oh, I, I can't, actually I think the smoke is also persistent. I'm not 100% certain if I've gotten there yet. So, let's get us started here. Um, of course, a lot of the new stuff that go, that's going in makes this very important because in time you might do one of these lamp tests and find that the canopy lock light, for example, doesn't turn on. Um, so you'd never actually know. You might think that your canopy's locked and it's not. Um, or you might find that the landing gear down green light works and the red light over here doesn't, or that the warning push reset button slides out, or something like that. Um, so, it'll add a new dimension to all that fun stuff. Uh, we'll do some checks here while we... And... Uh, Fuel pumps definitely come on. Uh, dope. That was a little stupid. We wanted to press shift control down, not just control down. Okay, so... Uh, inverted a battery. The avionics on for a moment to make certain that everything is turning on. Where it appears at the moment. Um, I'm not planning on actually spending too long here. We just want, I've got some stuff I've got to do. Um, so that's why we're doing this rather quickly. Uh, we 
can light on light everybody around us know we are actually about to start this baby up. Boost pumps to on. Starter to on. Ignition on. had some people ask about this creep look I do know it's annoying but it is not a problem with the bird or anything it's a problem with the sim for some reason it despite you despite the fact that you can have your brakes set massively hard um, it simply just won't work um, It'll just happily sit there and act like you've got the brakes slightly up. Um, that being said, I am looking into what I can do to see if I can't fix it. No promises at the moment. Um, it's like a lot of stuff. Okay, so we want a generator power, battery power, starter off, ignition off. Fuel pumps off. Oxygen on. Beacon strobe on. Could do an overvolt, an undervolt test. Um, I know that that system's not modelled yet, so I am not going to. We don't have any weather running, so we're going to go find the nearest um, runway, which is over here. over here we're going to um, take off and then I'm going to show you some of the failures and they're not my rudder's not centering a hundred percent I have to do a calibration on that at some point. been noticing it when I've been flying the dash
Okay, so obviously we are airborne now. Uh, uh, one other big feature is, and I can show it now that we're actually airborne. Um, as you can see, I'm trimming. Trim all the way up, trim all the way down. Um, obviously, if I go over here, trim. Trim rudder, trim rudder. Um, uh, the previous way, if I did an interrupt, didn't work. Was it an attempt to bring it back? As you can see now, um, the trim's just staying put. Trust me, I've got my trim button now down. So the trim disconnect actually now works as it should, rather than as it was. Um, it's all because of some extra data that we've gotten. Um, well, extra tools that come out. So, we're airborne, um, we're going to trim out for a second here. Bring up this panel. Now, if you watch here, if I... I'm going to jam my right side aileron in about this position, position so we're going to jam it in a slight right roll so we need to okay. as you can see the aileron is staying jammed in a bowl it'll still move it's because of the way we do animations in flight sim um, but at least at the moment but if I center my controls then just to show that the stick is actually centered. We definitely have a right roll going on, I'm not touching my controls. We have a jam happening and it's basically causing me to go into a right roll. Um, I'd have to obviously put more left stick input. So okay, what happens if I then jam on the left? Well, I've got no control at all. I am stuck doing rolling aerobatics. My controls don't want to move, as you can see. Oh, we've got jam left and the right and nothing is moving we will unjam that to give us back our controls and level out so okay that's a jam snap cable on the other hand I'm just going to try and keep this straight and level That's me rolling it back level. So I'm not actually putting any side to side inputs in as much as I can. You know, I'm ignoring it, but you can see that we're. We've got some funkiness happening here, and if you watch my aileron here, one side. Same deal on the left, if I fail. And then if I fail both of them, 
Okay, I have no control over what the airplane is doing for in its lateral positions. Um, okay, so this one, it seems to be wanting to do a lot of left-hand rolls. Um, I've had it do right-hand rolls, I've had it keep me fairly straight and level. Um, it's all random number generation at the moment for surfaces is actually doing. At this point in the real thing I think you'd actually just reach behind between your legs and pull because um, there ain't a lot you can do. In my case I can fix a failure. And let's put us over near, I do believe that is Perth, or Gendicott, one of the two, no, it's Perth. We'll go, we're going to go and land at Perth. Um, you'll notice we've used barely any oxygen, we're fairly low, we're not using oxygen real fast at all. Um, If we were high or the like, we'd be using oxygen at the rates on the card over here. Um, and eventually, I'm hoping to try and model things like asphyxiation. Um, and the like, if that runs out, you know, too high um, after a short period of time, depending on what altitude you're at, with no oxygen you'll start, start losing your ability to control the aircraft. Um, until it reaches a point where you crash or you come low enough that you would be able to.
So okay, given we're not exactly online or anything, I'm just going to reset my fuel pumps. Should have done that before landing, but oh well. Of the reason I'm shutting down this properly is because next time I start it up, I want it cold and dark, um, rather than ready to fly. No, we did forget to bring the flaps up. Let's give us emergency hydraulics for a second here. If we've got enough, come on, there we go. So, okay, my name's Rob. Um, let's look at some of the advanced stuff that's coming eventually for the PC-9. I hope you enjoyed the preview. I will talk to you all later.